Hello, ladies. Oh, hi. That's some That's 30 seconds in. <laughs> hi, guys. How are you? Everybody. Good. 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 Well, welcome you guys to True Vibe. This is our just kind of our coffee, our hangout, our girl time to talk travel. Um, this is a place for all of our followers to come and learn about relevant travel information, travel news, fun, exciting adventures you can go on, but mostly just to dream about the world out there and where we're headed this next year. So um, today, well, March is Family Travel Month. No, you're not, no, that's fine. I'll follow the, the prompts. I'm sorry. I got a little click happy there. <laughs> uh, March is Family Travel Month. We have been talking about family travel this month, obviously, because things are happening. We're moving, right? And we're talking about going places with our families, tips and tricks on the best ways to do that, um, what it's looking like in the year 2021, and then also um, just some awesome destinations. But today... Emily is going to take it away. We are talking about what it looks like to travel right now um, because we know that you guys have been talking about and then also, and then also. Oh, <laughs> there's an echo in the room. <laughs> yeah, <sorry. laughs> okay. <laughs> I, like, I think that's my voice. Um, <laughs> Anyways, we people have been talking about going on spring break. Maybe you have a trip planned. Maybe you're going. I know down here in the South, this is spring break week. So people are heading all out. So we want to make sure that you have all the tools and to help you really make safe and good decisions for your family to keep you, you know, responsible and safe and, and have having fun and really enjoying your trip and not just being worried the whole time. So um, we wanted to remind you before we start, one, that there will be children, there will be dogs, there will be interruptions, <laughs> there will be echoes, there will be, echoes. <laughs> there will be all of that because this is just three ladies talking to you from their living rooms. Um, but we wanted to let you know that we're just, we take it as it is, right? <laughs> take it as it is. And also number two, please leave your comments. We would love to see what you guys have to say. We would love you to join the conversation. If you're watching this on the replay, please leave your comments as well. We will get to those as soon as we can. Um, it's really awesome to be able to have this conversation with the three of us, but we love to be able to have it with all of you. So uh, feel free to post those comments. I think I got everything. Yeah, I think that, um, I mean, we always love comments, but um, kind of what we're talking about today really kind of lends to that too. So if you guys are watching and um, the whole point of this of this topic today is because we've been getting so many questions. So if you're watching and you have questions, please ask them. <laughs> ask, 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 ask away. So, all right, I think we're good. Let me... I, mean, actually, I just want to add one quick thing too to let everybody know that um, we have um, we we have all successfully helped people navigate this world. Like they yes. traveled and come back, mm -hmm. stayed healthy, stayed respectful to the communities and the destinations where they were. So we've been doing this. Like we, you know, we're on top of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we've all we've all gone places too. And we've mm -hmm. all stayed healthy. So so we're not sitting in some pretty castle like telling you guys all these these things. Like this is from real life situations. That's that's a really great, great note. That's awesome. All right, let's see. So I am in my fancy office, guys, and I have two computers, which means I can keep oh <laughs> wow. even fancier than I realized. Check out my that's flamingo, cool. isn't he cute? He's very that cute. <laughs> You guys, I know I got I have the keys on my brain right now. I just I can't I can't shake it right now. So we leave next week, right? Uh, uh a little over a week, yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Jeez, I know. Every day I get on my phone and it's like 12 degrees in Michigan, 78 in Florida. <laughs> I won't tell you how warm it is here then. Yeah, please don't. <laughs> All right, let's get started. So um Again, so the kind of the purpose of today is to kind of give not get not kind of, but to give everybody our our perspective as travel advisors of what to expect and how to prepare and go out and do spring break and to travel right now, considering everything going on. So um, you know, we may talk about things like vaccines, we might talk about things like quarantine, and that's not coming from a place of um like talking about politics or social or personal. That is us making talking about that because the
the travel industry really relies on those things right now. Um, in order for us to get back to like a new quote unquote normal of travel, um, we need to see those things so that the majority of the population feels comfortable and um, is ready to go out and travel. And we can do it in a way that is more recognizable and um, even more comfortable in what we're used to. Um, so, and then like we kind of said at the top of the hour, um, you know, a lot of this is coming because we've, not only have we helped a lot of people get ready to go or have already traveled, but we just are getting so many questions about like, okay, great, I'm going wherever for spring break. What do I need to do? What do I, what should I expect? So that's what we're talking about. Um, and I'd like Chelsea said, responsible travel. So how are people successfully traveling right now? So this is kind of interesting. When I was um, kind of pulling this together, I was just kind of Googling and kind of um, just finding some cool information. So some of it's good and some of it's all right. Um, so several colleges and universities have actually canceled their spring break just to kind of help with the numbers and um, just to keep, you know, just more responsible travel, I think, is kind of where a lot of the schools are coming from. Again, not that we have that opinion, but that's just kind of what has happened. And that's kind of um, kind of opened the door for more families to be able to go out and to be able to enjoy destinations without those extra crowds. Um, works at Trevecca uh, University here in Nashville, and they did that. And mm -hmm. what they've done is to sprinkle a couple days off over the course of this season yeah. to kind of give the kids the break, but then also to really just kind of break that up and not give them time to head out down to <laughs> spring yeah. break on the beach all together right. um, and really keep them safe. And they really have had high numbers of COVID. Obviously they're not as affected because they're younger, but mm -hmm. the numbers have gone around. And so it's really nice. I think everybody feels a little bit better right yeah. now knowing that there's not going to be a huge surge after March, you know? And the other thing that kind of goes hand in hand with that, a lot of places like um, like these beach destinations where they they might be, you know, in years past would have done like a concert on the beach or some sort of like um, some spring break get together with big crowds. Um, a lot of major cities have not given out permits and things like that to allow those events to happen this year. Even so, I mean, I talk about the keys a lot, but um, all all of the major keys have different events that go on throughout the months of March and April, and all of those have been canceled just to keep the crowds down and the the you know just the gathering down. Um, they just they're not getting the permits to be able to be allowed to do that. Um, Anyways, so, and then I saw this, this is kind of cool. So there are places who um, are really going out of their way to invest in good marketing and signage to make sure that they're promoting safe environments when people do go down and visit them. So um, I read the other day this article, it was in the New York Times that St. Pete Clearwater, there's actually like um, undercover people that are walking through the city. And if they see visitors who are properly doing what they're supposed to, wearing their masks and things like that. They're just randomly handing out gift cards to local businesses for people that are following the rules. I thought that was so cool. It's neat that they're like encouraging good behavior and, you know, they want people to feel good and comfortable and safe coming to their destination, but also that they're going to be respectful of their of their residents and other travelers, which is cool. cool. And then um, kind of like we, Chelsea, you and I talked last time, how things are two weeks ago, um, you know, things are just very different right now. So there's reduced capacities and there's curfews and um, rule enforcement teams. I'm calling them COVID police. Um, I've heard stories uh, from US directly as an example. There's literally teams of people that are stationed like every other block and they walk up and down the block. And if they see people without their masks, they ask you to put your mask back on and make sure that you're maintaining space. Um, there are even places that are literally handing people tickets if they're if they're being if they're not following kind of the rules of the local ordinances. So just be aware of those things. Like it's not you guys are not going to be able to just pack up and go and just think it's going to be like it was in you know 2019. Things are still pretty different. Yeah, but so. this the thing about all of that is that this is all things that we're used to. Right. You know, it's this not like you're doing. going somewhere and you haven't been wearing your mask. You right. know, it's not like it's a new thing. It's not like I, it's you know, at this point, it's not inconvenient. You know, every time we went to Target today and I, mm -hmm. we put our masks on and we put our masks on. So it's like, you don't even think about it anymore. You just do it, you know? So yeah. So it's, it's just vacation with all the things that you're doing here. It's just take what you're doing and, you know, to your new, to your next destination. Exactly. 
So um, I will just touch on this a little bit, but like everybody has varying comfort levels. And we've, again, we've talked about this before, um, you know, safe, safer, safest. So, you know, some people are choosing, you know, a safe option where they might be going to a faraway destination, but, um, you know, they're still going to go and follow, you know, proper precautions and just really get that change of scenery. Um, a short distance would be maybe something by car. Uh, we'll talk about these a little bit more. And then closer to home is obviously, um, you know, people that are just starting to venture out away from home. So a safe would be, you know, the greatest change to your surroundings. So from 12 degrees here in Michigan down to 78 in Key West, that's a great change of scenery. A um, great change. <laughs> it's a great um, but, you know, the people that are kind of going this route are choosing outdoor destinations and places that have good social distancing practices. Um, we were talking before we came on that, um, you know, there's really great hotels and resorts that are have amazing um, procedures and protocols right now for keeping people safe. Um, so, you know, you can still go and do those things and still stay really safe, even if you're totally changing where you are. You can still travel by plane. We we've had we have stories. We can share them with you if you guys have any questions about about what that's like. Um, you can travel by plane safely right now. There are ways to do it. Train, boat, whatever it is when you do, as long as there's you know you're wearing your mask and following whatever guidelines there are. Uh, safer. I know that's not a word, but it works. It works for what I'm saying. So it's a slight change to your surroundings, somewhat changing your surroundings with minimal exposure. So maybe you're going to go on a road trip or you're going to go camping or a vacation rental, or, um, you know, maybe you're going somewhere within a few hours and staying at a cool hotel. Um, we'll come back to that one too. <laughs> and then the safest option, because we know that some people are just not comfortable yet. So, um, you know, we want to encourage you guys that you find creative ways for still to be able to get that mental break in R&R &R because it's been tough on all of us being home this long. Um, so maybe maybe you um, want to think about even just doing a local day trip, going to you know a lake or a beach or a park. Um, maybe you wanna go to a, a nearby hotel would be fine or a house rental. Um, and this is my favorite, this is my favorite thing. So if you're not, if you're not yet ready to go somewhere this spring break, this would be a great, opportunity to start planning your next trip. So, um, <laughs> I mean, so we, right. We didn't really go anywhere last year, so we're going to be gone for two weeks this year. We just kind of crammed it all together. And, you know, if we weren't going this year, that trip would be that much more amazing next year. Yeah. So this is a great opportunity to, you know, really start, start thinking and dreaming. Kids are off school and, you know, maybe you're, you can take a couple days off of work and just pull out some cool paper and the markers with the kids and start thinking about where you guys want to go brainstorm together as a family. Um, and then I threw this in there, kind of some things to save for later. So, um, you know, we, we really want to try to encourage you guys to avoid in, indoor destinations and activities or gathering with other people and indoor dining as much as possible. Um, sometimes it's unavoidable, but, you know, just again, that you're thinking about those things and thinking about what's happening and, you know, just aware of your surroundings. And then these are pretty obvious, right? Like you want to avoid places that are super crowded, uh, really large gatherings, um, hotels and places that are not following pro protocols. And then I put this note down here about busy time of day. Um, this is kind of a cool tip too. Like if you're going out to dinner, maybe you go at four o'clock before the dinner rush comes so that it's less crowded. So then that way you're just, just one more level of kind of safety and thinking. We did that pre COVID and you can get the happy hour deals. Right. And it's not a huge <laughs> crowd. The food's better. It's like, yeah, it's true. <laughs> you just need to adopt the rest of your life. Okay. <laughs> I love it. It's true. When we go to Key West, we eat breakfast at nine o'clock, which is like a normal breakfast time. But in Key West, nobody's awake. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So just some do's and don'ts. And maybe this is like the mom slash teacher in me. I just felt like I really needed to throw this in there. But obviously, if you or somebody that you're planning on traveling with, or if you've been around somebody that's sick, don't go. Just don't go. We'll talk about this a little bit more. Um, please don't ignore the rules and advisories. I know it's so tempting and we've been in this for so long, but like we're getting so close to finally seeing the light at the end of this tunnel and finally getting out of this thing and, and, and really beating this thing. And right now we can't let up. We cannot be, we cannot ignore these rules and, um, 
we just, we need to stay strong right now, guys. And then obviously, please don't be disrespectful of other people and comfort levels. Um, unfortunately, with all the good news, sometimes there's bad news. And unfortunately, there's a lot of reports going around about people being harassed and things like that in places because they are wearing their masks or they're not wearing their masks or whatever. Just like, just be kind and just be respectful of the other people. Um, so again, over to the Duke, be kind, be patient, make sure you guys have lots of extra patience and lots of extra time doing things. Um, you know, do your best to stay healthy and have fun. And obviously if you guys have any questions that you guys reach out to your lovely trusted travel advisors and we will help you. Um, so then, um, one of our other tips here is to make sure that you have a contingency plan because if you, what happens if you get sick before you travel, we just kind of talked about that. Um, just reschedule. One of the things that has come out of all this is that a lot of places have come up with really incredible cancellation policies or reschedule policies where they just give you your money back or credit. Do that. Just do that. Um, it's just not worth the risk. And um, as Chelsea reminded me, and this is a big thing, travel insurance has never been more important. Yeah. This is where it comes in, keeping you safe if something happens, you're protecting all that money, you're protecting your time, you're protecting your health and you and your p other people around you. It's just just the best money you could spend right now is, is on travel insurance. On um, that I, note, Emily, sorry to, no, go ahead. Here, but talking about rescheduling and, and these places that have cancellation policies, I tell everybody that comes to me lately that I don't book properties that don't have a great cancellation policy yeah. and yeah. no travel, no travel advisor that you've really taken the time to get to know will. So mm -hmm. make sure that you talk to your travel advisor and mention it maybe. And they'll probably give you like, Oh girl, you don't even yeah. need to tell me I yeah. won't do it because we have as much invested in your trip. Um, professionally and because we adore you and we want you to have the best trip mm -hmm. the last thing we want is for you to get sick and have to cancel and then be stuck you right. know so we don't even work with those properties and then the travel insurance on top of it is just this incredible barrier that you know no matter what happens we're getting you the policy that's going to cover the things that you need to be covered for during right. all of this so right. Yeah. Sorry. No, <laughs> no, don't be sorry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I put this together, but really, I mean, this yeah. is based off of all of our conversations that, you know, we've been having. That's such a great, that is really great. You're right. We, we talk about that all the time. I think all of us have had scenarios where we're like, you know, uh, we're looking at this place, uh, you know, the, mm -hmm. it's not good. Like, yeah. And I, I had that conversation with a client recently. I talked to them three different times because they really wanted this property and they don't have a great cancellation policy. Yeah. So I told them multiple times, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Now, granted, they're not, they're not going until next year. So hopefully yeah. at that point in time, it won't even be an issue. Um, but it's just so good. You know, when you're on booking.com looking at these properties, it's so mm -hmm. great to get lost in like these pictures and, oh, this one looks perfect. Let's book it. Mm -hmm. And you don't even think about that. Whereas your travel advisor, that's top of mind. You know, right. that is a thing that we investigate before we even send you right. pictures of the place. So you don't get excited about it if it's not going to fit. Mm -hmm. Take it away. <laughs> yeah. Just to, just to add on to that too. We also know because we had this whole year of, um, you know, cancel trips and, and plus we just were involved in this network of travel advisors. We know who, who didn't refund. Mm -hmm. We know who they are. We, we may not know all the little tiny boutique -y things, but we can find it out. <laughs> we see you. <laughs> yeah, we can find it out. And I think I mentioned this um, on another call too. The travel industry as a whole has really stepped up. Yeah. And um, even though they have been unbelievably hurt financially, they they get it. They understand that they have to have these, you know, some flexibility in their in their um, policies right. um, for people to want to travel. So so I've been very impressed. Um, yeah. You know. yeah, I mean, it's it's thrown every one of us for a loop. It's just yeah. been it's just been crazy. It's just been crazy in the travel industry. But I mean, back to travel insurance, it's better to have it and not need it. That's really that's where it is. And I think, I don't know if you guys, if you guys know this, this proper number for the spring break trips that were canceled last year, people that didn't get to go, things were canceled when this whole thing started. It was something like $4.8 billion or something of, of consumer money that was spent 
and loss that 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 travelers just lost and all that money and still didn't even get to go on their trip like that that makes me sick like i i ref, i will not i i can't i cannot let anybody travel and lose that kind of money maybe i'm a tightwad but either way i just this is not necessary it's just not Anyways. Yeah, the, and the the um, the travel insurance industry as a whole has stepped up to the plate. So, right. um, if one thing that we all learned was that if you read the fine print of your policy, one of the exclusions for most travel companies was a pandemic. So, mm -hmm. the concept behind any kind of insurance is insurance is supposed to um, insure you against an unforeseen event. But they do do things like you know. If war, terrorists, you know, blah, blah, blah. There may be some exclusions on your policy. But the travel insurance companies recognize that, like, COVID-19 wasn't going to go away. So they sort of shifted and moved. So if you have concerns, then, um, you know, talk about them with your travel advisor mm -hmm. and get the policy that covers you for those concerns. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, for instance, I'm going overseas. I made sure I had a policy that if you know, I have to get tested before I go to get entry into the country. And I made sure I had a policy and they all do this now that if I test positive before I get on that plane, COVID-19 is treated as if I fell down and broke my leg mm -hmm. or I got some other, you know, got diagnosed with cancer the day before, whatever. So it's treating it the same. So I'm covered. Like I know that at least from a financial perspective, that's covered. Yeah. Right. Yeah, one thing I was talking about with the client recently is I know that it's something that you haven't had to think about in the past, you know, that it was people who are responsible travelers were doing it, but the average, you know, just heading out for spring break, that's not something that was on their radar. And I told her, I said, you know, it's just a really small investment now so that you know that you don't have a large investment in this trip yeah. later, right. you know, because I mean, having to pay out of pocket for all of that. P.S. A landscaping company just pulled in next door. <laughs> so it's not dogs or kids this time, but landscapers. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> so, all right. So, and then kind of to just, all of that too. So travel insurance, right? Policies before you go. If you get sick while you're gone, you know, make sure that you're quarantining, that you are getting tested, that you're getting medical attention. And obviously call your travel advisor that we can help you, you know, get in touch and, and work through what that what your coverage allows and things like that and making sure that you stay safe and keep other people safe. Um, and then one thing that I get a lot of questions on this, I don't know about you ladies, but you know, people are like, well, what about like, what happens when I come home? Cause I've been telling people when we come home from QS, we're quarantining for a week, we're going multi-states, you know, we're, we're doing everything we can to stay as safe as possible. But I, I would feel terrible if I came home and got my parents sick. Like that's just not, it's not an option for me. So we're going to come home and we're going to quarantine in our house for a week, just so that we know that we're not bringing anything back with us. And then obviously same thing as always, you know, if you do start showing symptoms of anything that you seek medical attention and that you I, would. I also want to say when you get back, like how great is it to know that for a week you get to hang out at your house? <laughs> I mean, this is pretty great. Like before you'd be like, I got to run and do all these things. Like, no, you can do your laundry. And right. <laughs> it's like, it sounds great to me. Yeah. 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 And we did, when we came back from Atlanta, we stayed in the house and, you know, it's like, you, you just have to understand like the possibilities out there, even if you don't feel sick, right. you know? And so making sure that you're being responsible to the, those around you in your community. Right. Um, so then here's this kind of the big question and we kind of have covered this. What happens if my destination does things differently than home? So um, our advice is gonna be to do whatever is safer. Uh, so if you, you know, um, because, and also whatever you're most comfortable with. So, um, you know, I come from a very conservative state and, um, as far as the, as COVID rules and things like that, we, um, I think we had this conversation, or maybe it wasn't you guys. I was talking to somebody the other day and I was like, yeah, our restaurants literally just went up to 20 or up to 50% capacity. And they were like, that's so crazy. And I'm like, no, it's really like, that's what it's like here. And, um, oh, I know it was Markham down in QS. That's what it was. 
anyways, um, so obviously I can't control capacities on vacation, but I can control wearing my mask and keeping distances and things like that. So that's what we will do no matter where we go is what we do here at home, which is honestly like the highest level of all the safety precautions and things like that. So uh, that's my advice would be to do whatever you're most comfortable with and how whatever you feel safest. So some tips, normally we do one, but these are all kind of go together as far as like getting ready and leaving in the next week or two. So um, know what's going on and the destination you're headed to. So another great reason for having a travel advisor, um, you know, I've got a, a client that's getting ready to leave in a couple of days and she, that was one of her first questions. I want to go to this place. What is it like? You know, and I put together a whole thing for her and sent her a bunch of leaks, links when you, you know, flying in the plane and when you get to your hotel, like in the state, these are the rules, da, 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 da. Know what's going on. If you don't know, reach out to one of us and we will help you. Um, avoid crowds, stay outside, um, keep your distance, keep your mask on. All those things are pretty standard. I like this one, guys. Um, use touchless options whenever possible. Um, I was explaining to the ladies, um, we are using Hilton properties when we drive down to Florida. And we chose them because I literally have an app on my phone and I put all the reservations for Hilton on my phone. And then when I get somewhere, I will, they'll send me a link and I can um, check in from my phone while we're driving. And then they will send me the information, what room and how to get in. And then I can just take my, my phone becomes my room key, which means I'm not seeing anybody. We will wear, put our masks on when we get out of our car. We'll walk in right straight to our room and we're, we're good to go. And, um, you know, Hilton has done a really great job of making sure that their properties are super clean and, and that they have really awesome, really awesome safety um, procedures right now. So touchless options um, if, you, if you can. Um, and I mentioned this earlier, try off the, off the beaten path for different things to do and then unusual times for dining or going places. And then obviously make sure that you're packing extra masks and hand sanitizer and, and all, that, all that gear before you go places. So um, one other quick tip too is I, that because of capacity issues, try to plan as much ahead of time. Right. So for instance, when, when my clients travel, I will make sure that like dining reservations are made ahead of time. All of those things are done because with reduced capacity, I mean, you said Michigan's up to 50%. DC just went back to 25%. They were closed again. Yeah. So all over the holiday, you know, it was closed. And I think it was like right at the end of February, she allowed them to open indoor dining again because we had a surge. Yeah. So like at 25%, there's not a lot of options. Right. So, um, you know, you don't want to be like going from place to place and, and, you know, getting not being able to go because people did make reservations. So that's another right. try to plan that kind of stuff out ahead of time. I mean, it's not terribly fun. Like, I think that um, that's kind of been a challenge that I've run into. A lot of people like that kind of go with the flow for spring break. Like, oh, you know, we'll just see where we are and when we feel like eating. And that's just another one of those things that's changed. It's just, it's just not possible yet. Again, if, right? I mean, yeah, it's just. But and I also feel like a lot of these tips are things that I would suggest even pre-COVID time. <laughs> I mean, I mean, truly and honestly. So you're traveling during spring break, which is one of the highest travel seasons out of the entire year. Yeah. So no matter where you go, even if you stay home, there's still going to be people there, right? Like I live right. in Nashville. <laughs> It's like gangbusters here. It's crazy. You can't even drive downtown, which it's not something we're comfortable with. So we're not going downtown again. We drove through it with the windows open, closed and we were like, what happened? <laughs> it is mass chaos. I mean, it really is. It went from ghost town, which was all terrifying on this level to like mass chaos. Um, but the eating at different times, that's something we do almost every time we travel. We try mm -hmm. to eat at off time so that we can have that quiet restaurant and have better service and just not it not be packed. Um, the things like pack your hand sanitizer. I hope you were washing your hands pre-COVID. <laughs> you know, like, because think about it. Okay, how many times have you heard that somebody got sick? as a dog at Disney world because they were touching everything and not washing their hands, you know, and like all the kids, everybody, we got sick at Disney world. That's why I'm bringing it up. <laughs> um, but there's just so many of these things. The only things that I see that are like 
like very, very different. Obviously the masks, we weren't wearing masks before um, and the six foot social distance. But I feel like if I'm on a beach, I'm going to be six feet from somebody anyways, I hope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. So yeah. like you just, I don't know. I think that all of this is amazing. We know what to do. If you go, go have fun, but be responsible and respectful of other people. And like you were saying, have a travel advisor because there's so many things that you don't even know to ask. Right. You know, like you were talking about what happens if you get um, sick when you're there. And one of the things that came to mind was as soon as we heard that as travel advisors, that they were going to require um, the testing to come back. As mm -hmm. soon as we heard that, literally that evening and into the next morning, resorts had already put in place that they were going to offer either free testing or testing on site or whatever, because they want you to come and they want you to feel safe and they want all of that. And so it's like the travel industry is responding to make this as seamless as possible, yeah. but everybody who travels needs to do their part. So right. have your travel advisor be your BFF right now yeah. <laughs> and be able to help you, but just don't, you know, have fun, go have fun right. and be respectful, which I feel like people should have done when they were traveling. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah, and you know, know, a lot of it, we don't know what the healthcare systems are in the places that we're traveling to, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't want to go there and be irresponsible, but you're right. We shouldn't, even without a pandemic, you hear stories about, the, you know, all the coffee cups that are left on the bridges in Venice and empty, you know, I'm like, like, we, it's just a time to really start thinking about, you know, travel is, um, it's a privilege. It's not a right. It is a privilege. And, um, and it's like going to into somebody else's home. You know, we would be, if I go visit somebody, I'm going to be really respectful to them and to everybody in their home. I'm not going to be a rude guest, right? Well, I don't want to do that in any of the destinations I go to either. Um, so I just think we need that added level of respectfulness. Right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. It's true. I mean, we want, we want people to go. Everybody wants the travel industry to come back because everybody loves to travel. But the longer that... Not the longer, because I mean, really, we're just kind of starting to get back into the swing of things here. But if it takes people longer to continue to follow the rules and listen, it's going to take longer to get back to what we're all used to and really what, what we want. Like, I would love if I could just wander Duval Street without having to wear a mask. Like, I don't want to have to think about that while I'm on vacation. And every, like we, every single person wants to do that. Like, that's what we're going for. That's the goal, but we can't get there overnight. Like we have to make sure that we're taking all these steps and that we're being responsible. Mm -hmm. So please be responsible. Yeah. When we went to Disney, you know, it, it wasn't super hot. It was in January, but you got to a point where you weren't even thinking about your mask. Yeah. I was screaming on Everest, the roller coaster, my mask is like up over my eyes. And I think that's the only time that I was like, oh yeah, I've got a mask on. So like, you're not really thinking about it. Yeah, that was intense, guys. I'm not a roller coaster person. So, um, but you don't even think about it and it's expected. I feel like at places like Disney, there's a level, you know, that you're kind of, there's cast members around and they're keeping you in check and, and everything like that act like you're, you know, mom is watching. Like, I don't know, <laughs> like whatever you have to do to understand that it's not as big of a deal as certain people are making it out to be, you know? And like, let's get back to travel because I'm ready to go. I want to go to Europe, y'all. <laughs> I know, I'm ready to go. I'm so ready. <laughs> like, oh, please, yeah. for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, if anybody has any questions or anything, let us know in the comments. Like we said, even if you're watching this on the replay, we would love to know what you guys are thinking. If you're traveling somewhere, mm -hmm. um, what your plans are, if you're, you know, a little bit worried about travel right now, if it's still something that you're not sure of, please let us know, like talk to us here in the comments. We'd love to have that conversation with you guys, even on the next call. Um, but yeah, we hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you, Emily, for that awesome Perfect presentation as always. <laughs> Cute haircut. <laughs> I know. I probably should have told my followers uh, that this was happening. I look a little different now. To expect it. Just show up. Surprise them. <laughs> yeah.
But yeah, we thank you guys so much. If you want to get in touch with any of us and have uh, conversations with us about anything that you're looking for in travel, uh, you can contact Beth at Beth at tapestrytravel.com. I'm Chelsea at anywhere, everywhere, travel.com. And Emily is at signpostdestinations.com. We would love to help you think about where you want to go and help you figure out what is required to get there. And even if you're not ready, we'd love to dream with you about what you want to do in the future. Yeah. Right. Right. Yep. Even, even next spring break or Christmas or whatever, whatever it is that you want to do. That's, that's what we're here for. We're planning a birthday trip for a ton of people in 2023. So yeah. I promise you it's not too early. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully we won't be wearing masks then. So mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> But okay. well, thank and you we'll guys. Next week. Yep. Sorry, Em. <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> Bye, thank everybody. you guys for joining us. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.